Hey there, Amplifiers, and welcome to another episode of Growth Amplifiers Live. We've got an incredible session here for you today, and we're going to be talking about reducing your growing pains. So how can you extend your reach and improve your results by hiring virtual assistants on your team? And my guest here today is going to be Anna Santiago. She is a COO of Outsource School, and I came across Outsource School. I've been following Nathan and Connor over the last year and a half. Uh, they've done a great job of building this company. And Anna has been working remotely for 10 years. She started at the age of 18 and started taking on her own freelance clients full time, helping them with sales work, SEO, e commerce, among other things. As the COO of Outsource School, she's in charge of managing an entire team of 15 plus uh, assistants, optimizing op operations, and contributing to the growth of Outsource School. So let's all welcome Anna to the show. Hi, Anna. How hey, are you? everybody. <laughs> welcome to Growth Amplifiers. It's good to see you. Oh, you too. Thank you so much for having me. This is a, a really great opportunity, and I hope I can um, help a lot of entrepreneurs out there. Well, I'm sure you can. You've got a ton of experience. And I wanted to help our listeners understand a little bit about you. So. Let's start off by uh, talking about your background and how you got connected with Outsource School. Yeah, um, it's it's a, a pretty funny story. Um, I wasn't um, I was in a corporate setting for several years before I dedicated my life full time to freelancing and becoming a virtual assistant. Um, it was a, when I gave birth to my my daughter so i have i have a girl she's four um and i just wanted to spend so much time with her i didn't want to go back to work and back then i was traveling about six hours a day just to and from work each day just so that i can i can see her and i got tired of that and i wanted to spend more time with her so my mom comes to me and she's like hey why don't you go back to freelancing um, I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe for just part time, but I don't think it's gonna, really going to work out full time. Um, but she she changed my mind. I I applied to FreeUp um, when I when FreeUp was around. I already had experience with web development and content writing and and stuff like that. So I started there, um, and I also had ex a lot of experience with um, e commerce, and I just loved it. I fell in love with with Nathan and Connor and how they grew their business and. Uh, three years later, uh, I got a message from Cheeky, which was their head of VA in the past. And I, and she said, um, we have a really good opportunity to work with Nathan and Connor. Um, it doesn't really pay as much as you are making right now, but they're just looking for a general virtual assistant, uh, to help with calendar management and inbox management. And I'm like, Hey, to work with Nathan and Connor, that's fine. That's an opportunity of a lifetime. So I took the job, we hit it off. Um, and here I am a year later managing the team and doing podcasts. So that's that's where I am now. And that's how I came to know Outsource School. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> we talked a little bit about you know that admiration for Connor and for Nathan. What do you love most about being part of the team at Outsource School? they are the only clients in the past 10 years that ever um cared about my growth and pushing me to my potential a lot of my other clients would just hire me for for one specific thing and make me do that for three four years straight and not really um taking into consideration that i i did have other skills and i i was i i, I did have i have a lot of knowledge in other areas and so even if i i took the initiative and told my other clients like hey i can also do this i saw that you can improve this area can can i step in can i offer you my 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 skills and they're like oh yeah we can we can do that maybe in three six months and by then they completely forgot about it and um so uh, it's just not not really motivating and it, they, they don't care about growth. But Nathan and Connor, they do. They treat us like family. We, we, we can joke around with, with, with Nathan and Connor and, and it's just great. It's just family and, and relationships, really. That's wonderful. And, you know, our, our show here is called Growth Amplifiers. So we're really big advocates of finding ways to grow and optimize 
And, um, you know, it's great to hear that they're doing that with you. Uh, I want to share yeah. the information a little bit. Um, you know, we work with a lot of uh, profit advisors, uh, business owners who are, you know, busy. They have successful businesses and they're looking for ways that they can get more done without taking up more time. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see business owners facing that you work with? Biggest challenges I see. Um, they try to do everything on their own, which doesn't work. You know, if you want to scale your business and if you want it to grow, you're going to have to find help. And nowadays during the pandemic, it's really hard to put together a team in the office. So, I mean, even before the pandemic happened, um, there are a lot of ways a virtual assistant can help with your business, right? And it's just um, the the trust, the risk that I think is the most challenge for a lot of business owners now. Yeah, and, and we see that too. It, it's like that challenge where they, they don't want to give up that control. And sometimes they have some preconceived notions with maybe outsourcing. So what are some of the common myths that you see people, business owners have about outsourcing? Common myths. Um, one is like, you can only hire a VA for data entry and easy tasks. Not true. I have yet to find um, what a VA cannot do. Um, living, living testimony right here, doing podcasts for Nathan and Connor, right? Um, another one is there's a big communication barrier. Um, just a small background. I'm, I'm from the Philippines and born and raised here. And uh, communication has never really been an issue for me or any of my clients. And there are a lot of, of really great um, VAs out there that have a great command of the written and spoken English. Another one can be they can't work US times. Hell no, I love the night shift. I'm, I've never been a morning person. Um, they won't care about your business or they will have constant internet issues. They're gonna steal your business info. Um, they won't stick around long-term, they're more for project-based. And I can tell you it's it's not true and I can dive um, into that later as well. <laughs> well, um, let's say that someone has made the choice, you know, I'm gonna outsource and maybe they don't know where to start. What are some common roles that a business owner can outsource to help them free up some time? You can start with the basics like email management. I know a lot of entrepreneurs whose emails uh, are up to like 500 or 1,000 or 2,000 and they don't really go through all of them or they don't have the time to go through all of them. So um, with, with a VA for just basic inbox management, they can clear your emails out daily, leave anything that's important for you or just make sure that you know that it's there. They can do calendar management. They can do social media um, management and writing, writing your content for your website. Um, they can do lead generation. So for, for a lot of people, lead generation is very important for the business, you know, to drive traffic towards you, find those leads that are, that are interested in your products and your services. Um, those are just a few, there's quite a lot more. <laughs> yeah, I know the, um, the first thing that I started to, you know, delegate was getting some of those uh, calendar management. And it's amazing how many professionals are out there that still go back and forth on email trying to coordinate a meeting versus either having someone that's setting it up or having, you know, a link to their calendar. And there's a lot of, you know, uh, lost time that's, you know, uh, wasted there uh, for those people. Um, yeah. Um, I, uh, when I first started with Nathan and Connor, super funny, Nathan's calendar was a complete mess. When you open it up, it exploded with 10 different colors every single day, you know, and, and even just that, just clearing up your, your, your client's calendar, making sure that they know exactly which appointments are there and which are like double booked, for example, and just limiting how many calls they can take a day or even podcasts. Nathan used to do two or three podcasts a day. It was killing him. So I managed to, to, to book only one a day. Um, each week or max two if it's a really, really good one, right? Um, but yeah, so even just that is a big help. That's a really key <laughs> insight because I think a lot of people um, forget that it's not only, you know, getting them slotted, but it's also thinking about the strategy. Uh, do you want, how many do you want per day? Because sometimes people open the floodgates and then the next thing you know, you're booked 
you know, so much that you don't have time to do other things. And that's something that we've experienced too in our business where we started to open up some slots and the next thing and we know we didn't have enough time to do anything else. Uh, so that's a great, great perspective that you bring where you can not only manage the, the calendar, but also help your client to realize and think of some things that maybe they overlook in the process. Yeah, totally. Well, let's talk about, uh, let's say someone is ready to make the leap. Um, how do they decide when the right time to uh, start hiring for their business would be? So um, a lot of people that I talk to when they're interested in outsource school, um, they, they come to me and they're like, oh, my business isn't isn't really set up yet. I don't know what to give the virtual assistants, what tasks. Right. So there it's it's much better, in, in my opinion, to learn what you're getting into um, before you're even ready to. So um, with our main system, for example, we call it cracking the VA code. We teach our clients to prepare to make the hire first, right? Putting together a, a task list. What do you do on a daily, weekly, monthly basis that you know how to do, how long it takes you to do it? And then there's a second list. The second list is for things that you're not quite sure how to do, like more specialized stuff, video editing, graphic design, web development, writing, for example, and then just put them on on, a, on the second list. So going back to the first list, when you look at your task list of what you do on a daily basis, you spend two hours on your email handling, another hour, you know, fixing your schedule, making sure you, you have time to fit in all the little things. Um, and just like that, it's three hours of your day just lost on figuring out where you are and, and how, to, how to manage your day. So we start there figuring out what, what you need help with, but we also help you do that, right? Um, and it's, for me overall, it's just important to understand what a virtual assistant is. We have three levels of virtual assistants, the follower, the doer, the experts, and what those um, are, what they what they mean, what, what expertise do they bring to the table. Um, understanding how to manage virtual assistants before even making the hire. So, um, I just say, take the leap and um, learn what you can before you even decide you need to hire. Yeah, and I, I will um, credit your team because I've gone through your trainings and you, uh, Nathan and Connor and the whole team do a great job of really showing exactly how they do the process. They show the videos and walk you through step-by-step step how to do those things and it makes it, takes a lot of pressure off of someone like me uh, you know, the first time I did it where I could simply just follow the structure because uh, much like a VA can follow a process by following the outsource school process, you're able to uh, ensure that what you're doing is, you know, the correct pathway and you don't have to uh, figure it out on your own. So I really enjoy that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of other business owners say that, oh, I don't have time to learn something new. Um, the great thing is it doesn't really take a lot of time just to go through the fundamentals and we we hold your hand through it. Um, it's not something that you do on your own. It's something that you do with us. And we have this new service we call Care Plus, where if you don't have the time to even sift through candidates, look for the right person, we do it for you. We create the job post, we look for the candidates, we interview them for you, of course, you know, with, with guidance from, from the client. And then we give you our, our scorecard or recommendations of, of someone that we would hire ourselves with um, in our team. So we, we help make the process as easy on you as possible to save you time, because that's our focus, to save as much time as you can so that you can uh, focus on the more important parts of your business. That's a really important part there. And could you give me an example of like some of the things that either Nathan or Connor or maybe one of your clients that they were able to focus on once you started to take some of those lower level tasks off their plate? That is that is uh, an easy question, but also a very big one. So a lot of the business owners I've um, encountered or helped um, through coaching sessions tell me that they rarely even have time to sit down with their family for dinner. That in itself is a big thing or spend time with their kids 
who constantly bug them like, hey, mom, hey, dad, because um, they're, they're out of school. They're just at home. Spend time with me. Play with me. Let's go for a, a family trip. And they can't do that because they're, they're too caught up in the business trying to do everything themselves that they can't take a step back and, and just enjoy the other side of life. Right. Um, also focusing on the growth of their business. You again, you can't grow your business if you don't have any help. Um, expanding the the team to 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 take over daily operations so that they can have more partnership meetings. Um, find what else they can do to expand their business more. That's very true. It's amazing how just freeing up a little bit of time can make a huge difference for somebody. Um, yeah. One of the things, you know, you mentioned the myth about communication, but how do you set up you know, strong communication with your food mentors or your assistants? Oh, we have daily check ins. We have weekly team meetings and I set up Nathan and Connor as well, set up individual weekly meetings with everybody on the team just to make sure that we're on the same page with everything that we get along. Um, it's very important that from the very start, you build relationships with all of your VAs and make sure that they build relationships with others. I have had clients in the past where we had a solid a uh, team of 10 VAs, but you, we, I didn't know anyone else on the team because they weren't really introduced to me. Here at Outsource School, we make sure that we know what everyone else is doing, what their role is in the company, because then we can, you know, gel and, and help each other with those tasks. We understand um, how our tasks affects the next person on the team. And we have monthly um, happy hour calls where me, Nathan, Connor, everyone on the team just plays games, tells jokes and um, stories about who they are and, and what they like outside of work. So it's really important in a working relationship to to have even just a little bit of personal um, relationship there as well. So like me, me and Nathan, I mean, he's he, he can seem pretty intense, but when you get to know him, he's he's really funny and we we have a, a relationship beyond just work. We're pretty close, I say. That's great. You know, it's funny. I, I was just thinking back in terms of my journey of you know learning to uh, delegate and add you know team members that are outsourced. And what I've learned is that it actually helped my business structure better because some of the things that we needed to implement to bring on another team member, uh, those were things that we needed to do for ourselves and our business. But a lot of times you don't realize that. And we see a lot of business owners that are in the same spot where they're not having regular team meetings. They don't have their goals defined. They don't have uh, their procedures and their SOPs. And I think by you know going through the process of bringing on a team member and following that format, they can actually really help their right. business uh, be more efficient and more optimized. Yeah. And one more thing I'd like to add about that is um, a lot of business owners aren't really honest with their virtual assistants. They feel like the virtual assistant is just there to do a task and that's it. You know, they wouldn't care what else goes on in the business. That is not true. Um, I had a client where he wouldn't tell me anything. And then um, down the road, it, it turns out he was having some issues with, with certain areas that I could have easily helped him manage or, or handle. And with Nathan and Connor, they're, they are very open with what direction the business is, is taking, what the goals are for this quarter. And everyone on the team helps reach those goals. And everyone on the team is happy when we reach those goals because we work hard together instead of individual separately and not in sync with everyone. That's great to have that transparency. And uh, you, you mentioned on the one side where maybe your talents aren't being utilized, but um, can you talk a little bit about when hiring a virtual assistant, you know, should you be hiring them for, you know, one role or trying to, you know, find that person can, who can do everything for you? Great question, really. Um, so I was the type of virtual assistant that at some point did everything for the business. One, if you find that person, hang on to them for dear life. They're a, they're a great asset to have um, and probably would make them a good team leader 
project manager material or um, your virtual COO. Now, um, the cons to that is if that virtual assistant is out sick or, you know, God forbid she gets he or she gets COVID and is out for two weeks, then you have your one man team gone and um, all of the tasks under that um, just fall right back into your lap until they get back or they suddenly just leave because it was it got too overwhelming to handle all of it so at first yes you can do that if if the first va that you hired has skills to manage everything that you need right now then great but as soon as as the tasks become overwhelming this is where communication plays a big part. Check in with them all the time if they feel comfortable or uncomfortable with the task, if, if they're too tired, if they're burning out. You don't want that. Um, you know, and then hire someone under them. Once you have that second VA, the first VA can basically train your second VA how you like things done, what what your business is all about what's important what are the values in your business and then of course your your first va your rock star has support when they need it that's great and i like the thought of growing the team i know one thing that i struggled with and I, i've seen other business owners struggle with too is you know when they're trying to hire that that first position they essentially give everything out there and one thing that both connor and nathan have seen uh, coach people in the group and uh, coach business owners is, you know, really focus, start small and then grow with them a little bit over time so that you can ensure that you're getting the traction and that everything's working correctly. That way you don't have too many variables in place. So I, I do like yeah. the idea of looking for that, that, you know, when you find that diamond in the rough, you find that person that's, <laughs> you know, keep giving them opportunities to grow with the team, but not, um, you know, starting off with throwing everything up, you know, in the world at them at one time. Yeah, focus on what's most important in your business. And then of course, you know, if, if they can handle a little bit more, then give them more, um, give them more responsibility, give them room to grow with you in the company. And then as, as time goes by, you find out that there's more to be done and your VA is doing great, hire someone under them, promote from within, have have the first VA become the, the team leader, teach the, the newer ones, and then um, define their roles even more. So I started with just general VA and then I moved up to team leader then we hired a sales virtual assistant we hired an onboarding specialist we hired um we hired a blog manager partnership and an affiliate manager after that so define their roles more it doesn't mean that they can't do more than one thing just make sure that they they're focused on on certain number of goals that's that's with the role and then of course they can always support in different areas all the time this is why it, the the relationship within the team is important so when everybody knows what everybody else is doing they can easily just step in and support when they have some extra time excellent i want to talk a little bit more about virtual assistants generally um, what are some advantages of hiring virtual assistants over in-person or, you know, in-office employees? So right now it's it's not really an option, right? But uh, talking outside of the pandemic, one, hiring a virtual assistant, um, let's just say, for example, from the Philippines, it's more cost friendly. So for as compared to hiring from uh, someone from the, the U.S., for for my um, for for a skill set like admin related skill set, not 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 even just my skill set yet. Let's talk about lower. So for admin assistance, just just handling your emails, um, doing customer service, or managing your your calendar, you can get a virtual assistant for five to seven dollars an hour, as compared to hiring someone in the U.S. for fifteen twenty an hour. Right. So it, it, it saves you more time. Um, another thing is Filipino VAs are genuinely or um, generally, I should say, sorry, more um, they are efficient. They are very hardworking and dedicated. They will they will value your company to the highest level if you give them that opportunity and they will treat the business as your own. They're very passionate people, genuine and um, very appreciative for, for the opportunity. Um, one thing that you guys have to understand about about Filipino VAs, um, just just because I, I experienced it myself, is that um, 
we don't make much in the Philippines. So we are overworked, underpaid. We have to travel four or six hours a day um, for, for most of the population just to just to get to the office. Um, some of us are not paid overtime. Uh, we're, we're expected to, to, to perform above and beyond and we're not paid very well. We just barely make it by paycheck to paycheck. And so working as a virtual assistant gives us an, a greater opportunity. It, it opens so many doors for us. We earn a little bit more as a VA. We get to stay home with our kids. Um, so just that, just that little bit is why um, working with virtual assistants is better than um, in person. It, it's, I promise you it's the same. There is no difference between a personal assistant and a virtual assistant. They are the same. It's just managing them and training them is a little different, but it is possible. Yes, and um, we've, we've had great experience with our virtual assistants. It's allowed us to do lots of new things. Um, so in terms of where you see, you know, your kind of realm in terms of your industry going, where do you see the freelance and the gig economy going over the next few years? Right now, um, a lot of the people I know moved into freelancing and um, it's the market for it right now is booming. So the with Outsource School and with with other real, um, similar um, platforms and websites, they are all now teaching people how to outsource, teaching people how to move their business online retail and and even even food right a lot of it is online now so the need for virtual assistance is growing i can say it it'll it'll be it'll be the bomb the thing if not this year then maybe next year and in a couple of years i i definitely agree i see it accelerating obviously because of the the events over the last year and i think now that people are, are comfortable with it it's going to continue to grow and people are going to be leveraging it even more so. Um, to finish up, I want to ask one more question and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about outsource school for our listeners. Um, what's the biggest common mistake that you see people make when outsourcing? Common mistake. There are a, a, quite a few. So we have a lot of, of, of mistakes when interviewing training, onboarding, and managing the virtual assistant. Um, the biggest one I think is upfront, not asking the, the right interview questions. So depending on the skill, I'll give you, I'll give you one really great tip. So um, one big mistake when interviewing is a lot of people look for the skill set. They look for experience who has the most experience and skill set out of all the candidates but really that is a mistake aside of course from the skill set and experience which is which is needed yes you have to look for the red flags you have to look for the great communication and the good attitude so in the long run if you have an an expert has has a long resume has a lot of skills in the long run, if, they, if they're not good with communication and, and they don't have a good attitude, it's not going to work. You're probably going to get a good six months. If you're pushing it, maybe a year. But then after that, they're just going to leave you. You're going to have attitude problems. You're going to have communication issues. Um, with people with maybe a little bit less experience, but good communication and great attitude, you can teach them anything. They'll pick up things fast. They'll, they'll listen to creative um, feedback. Um, constructive criticism, I should say, sorry, and um, help it help their growth, right? Um, for, for those people who have a lot of skills and experience and think that they are the best, they aren't the best people to, to teach, if that makes sense. So just one out of the many common mistakes made during the whole process. And there are a ton more that we can also discuss later on as well. I like that. I like the you know, not looking for, you know, who's got the best skill set, but really looking for those red flags, because we all know that, you know, it takes a lot of time to hire someone. And if you can identify those early, you're going to yes. uh, help yourself out a lot in the long run. So, Anna, I know that you've got a, a special offer for our listeners. 
And uh, I want to give you an opportunity to go ahead and, and tell them about that. We're going to also link those into the show notes. Uh, but please tell uh, our listeners how they can learn more about Outsource School and how they can connect with you. Yes. Okay. Really great. So I have a great deal. I have, I have a gift for all of you listening on um, the Growth Amplifiers podcast. We created a 25% off coupon for anyone who wants to join um, our yearly plan. It's Growth 25. It's on the screen right now, and I'm sure Manny will put it in the show notes. Um, also, another bonus for anyone who wants to get in touch with me and schedule a call with me. I would prefer using the link now on the screen um, over our booking link on the website. So our booking link on the website is managed by our sales representative or our, our business um, specialist, our business growth specialist. But um, I would really don't want you guys talking to someone else after we've already discussed a couple of points on call. Um, so, uh, and I wanna offer you a bonus if you schedule a call with us. Um, we help you guys figure out what, what you need specifically in your business. This is not a one size fits all. We make sure that it is tailored to fit your needs. We go over common mistakes made when interviewing, onboarding, training, and managing, and that's just the fundamentals. We help you um, figure out what you need to know, um, pre preparing for making the hire, what to do during the hiring, how to onboard them, how to train them, what's a great, great ways to train them, how to manage them, how, bonus and raises, how to fire them if needed, weekly meetings, what are you supposed to talk about in those meetings? Um, what are the different types of virtual assistants, the doers, the followers, the experts, what do you need? And we help you um, through all of that. And that is just the fundamentals. We have a lot more in there. We have coaching from Nathan and Connor themselves and me as well, um, and other bonuses. So please, if you wanna learn more, book a call with me and um, you have the, the discount code, just let us know. If you don't talk with me, just make sure that you tell them, I heard Anna on Growth Amplifiers with Manny Torres and um, they gave us a good deal. <laughs> awesome, Anna, thanks so much. And uh, again, if you are running a busy practice or you're a business owner that uh, feels like your time is slipping out of your hands, I highly encourage you to schedule a call with Anna their team can help you out. Just being on the call is going to help you uh, identify some ways that you can improve. And uh, we appreciate you being here today, Anna. And we appreciate everyone out there listening to our call here today. Thanks, Anna. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.